Hey guys, so today I got this old Tektronix scope from like the 70s, early 80s. It is a Tektronix 465 oscilloscope. At the top it has a multimeter and that's pretty much all I know of it. Um, I haven't turned it on yet, so let's turn it on, see if it works, and then if it doesn't, let's try and fix it. If it does work, let's open it anyway. Okay, so this is still the old Tektronix uh, logo. You can see that at the top, and at the top of the oscilloscope we have a small um, multimeter, which I think is quite nice. Um, for this scope, the screen is in, this, is in the center, not on the side like almost every other oscilloscope on the market. I think in those days it just made sense to have a thing in the middle. On the one side we have our channel one input and um, gain controls, um, the different mixing um, options, you know, chopping, alternating, adding, and at the bottom, that's an intensity control. Uh, the two next to it, I don't know what those do. Some trace rotation. Oh, times 10 switch. Uh, another switch that's slightly broken, but we can fix that. And here we have our trigger controls. Uh, I think, yeah, it's, it's got an external trigger, I think, yeah. And so first, let's see if it actually turns on. Okay, let's turn on the power switch. I don't actually know where the power switch on the scope is. Okay, so my first, first problem is how do I turn it on? Ah, here it is. Okay, so you pull that thing to turn it on. Um, our intensity. Okay, so this so the trace is quite bright. Okay, we can focus it. Let's give it a signal. Chompers need to yeah, need, need a bit of a clean. Okay, it appears to be triggering fine. Okay, so since this thing appears to work, let's open it up. Okay, so there are a few screws here at the back that were supposed to hold in the feet, but the feet sort of broke off. So I'm just gonna remove those. Okay, so this is just a basic calibration void of a removed sticker, but it's already sort of removed. I'm just going to remo remove it entirely. Okay, so this is finally the top section. This is obviously the tube, don't really want to touch that. There's a power transformer, a bunch of capacitors and the multimeter board. So on the side we have the vertical amplifiers and yeah, 
bunch of all bunch of trimmers. So on the bottom we have some long rods going from the what was it? Focus and intensity controls. It goes to this uh, thing that says high voltage. So I'm not going to open that. And yeah, I like these mechanical rods. Very nicely built. So. I don't know what that does. That is the. Oh, sorry. This is a trace rotation. And another fuse. Actually, this entire section is high voltage. Now that I, now, now I see it. Um, and what's left? Oh, probably. Probably this side. Yes. So this is a power switch, it's just a rod. It goes to a normal toggle switch. Very nice design, I like it quite a bit. And the one nice thing about this cover that I find quite fascinating is that all these traces or more or less hand-drawn bodge over here on the on this one IC. Yeah. I don't know if you can see on that pin, but it's like a wire or something connected to it. This one I see the one leg is bent up and then it's all the two resistor that goes to where the leg was. Someone screwed up somewhere. So I'm, so I'm just going to spray a bit of contact cleaner into the pots. Some of them are not working very nicely. Hope that seeps in. Okay, so I forgot to mention there are these four BNCs on the back. Um, don't you really know what the external Z axis 24K? Oh, you know that 24K is just a input resistance or output resistance, but uh, yeah, I don't know what the B gate and the A gate is. Hmm, doesn't really matter. Okay, so this is this isn't even late 70s. This is early 70s. Um, this is on one of the center boards, so I take it this scope was released in 1972 or was bought in like the early 70s. So yeah, and this is the multimeter board. Everything is a 4000 logic or 74 series logic. Everything very basic. Quad op amp. Now, something else I noticed is on the um, input channel board, um, almost all the transistors are socketed. So you can just pull them out, just like that. Maybe that's for easy replacement. Maybe the transistors failed often. I'm not really sure. Uh, your classic 2N3904 NPN general purpose transistor. I used so many of these when I started with electronics. They are so, they're useful for almost anything. Okay, so this is the back of the CRT. And it's difficult to form, but on the, just below the CRT there's like this massive copper transformer quill type thing. Don't really know what it's for, but it looks interesting. Oh yes, I forgot. I forgot to mention the input for the multimeters uh, on the side. Okay, so I'm trying my best to form this, but this is probably the largest canned IC I've ever seen in my life. It has probably like 16 pins. I have, like the largest one I've seen before. This had like four or five pins, but yeah, this one has a lot of pins. I don't know what it's for actually. I can't really read that number without opening the, up the entire scope. Okay, so this is a this is the trigger side of the oscilloscope, not the vertical inputs, and almost all the chips or ICs on it are Tektronix branded. Quite 
Quite interesting. So I had enough money to roll their own chips. And all the chips appear to be gold plated. Yeah, you're going to struggle to get replacements for that.